Welcome back, my friends, to The Morning Mindset. Are you ready to get your mind aligned with the truth of God? Now, as we endeavor to do that every day, we come upon passages at times as we walk systematically through the scriptures that we have to admit to ourselves are a bit confusing. Things that we don't understand about. And the one that I brought up yesterday from 1 Peter chapter 3 is one of those. It's a passage that tells a story or tells about a situation that we don't hear about anywhere else in the scriptures. And so all we have to go on in understanding the topic that it brings up is what is right here before us in this passage. This is 1 Peter chapter 3, and we've been looking at verses 19 and 20. And Peter has revealed to us, kind of like a a movie premiere, it's the first time we ever hear about it in scripture, that when Jesus died, he was made alive in the spirit. So naturally, he was still alive in his spirit. And he went and proclaimed something to the spirits in prison. Okay, and that's the first we ever heard of this concept, that there are spirits in prison. And he says he went because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah. Now, this is verse 20 or First Peter 3, while the ark was being prepared. So stop for a moment. Make sure you understand Noah, back in the days when the flood was coming on the earth and God had revealed to Noah he was going to destroy the world because of the wickedness that existed. He commanded Noah to build an ark. And so God being patient was allowing Noah time to build the ark. He had waited and waited and waited as the wickedness got worse as a demonstration of his patience. And it's saying when Noah was building that ark, there were people there who now it's referring to as spirits who are in prison who did not obey. We're assuming that they were part of those who were wicked, who were to be destroyed. And it's saying that Jesus went and preached to the spirits of those people in prison somewhere. Now, what does this say to us today? I mean, it's kind of an odd story. It feels strange to us simply because it's so unfamiliar. We don't hear about this anywhere else. What does this say to us today? Well, there's a couple of things that come to my mind. First of all, that Jesus is the Savior of all who will believe. So, if Jesus went back, I'm not saying if in a, in a way in which I doubt it, I'm just saying if Jesus went back and preached to the spirits of those who rebelled against God in a former time, it's because Jesus is the only one who could bring about any change in their circumstance. Jesus is the Savior. There's none other. Well, another thing here is that it reminds me that God has answers to all the difficult quandaries that come up in our minds. You see, because sometimes we wonder, well, what about people who'd never hear about Jesus? Are they saved? What about people in deepest, darkest Africa who don't get a chance to know about the gospel? Can they be saved? And you know, when we don't have specific answers given in the scriptures, we are forced into a place of trust, aren't we? I was just talking with someone yesterday about a situation where they don't know what's going on in the other side of a situation. And it's been that way for a long time, but they have to trust God to be handling things on that side of the situation as they continue forward in obedience on their side of the situation. And this passage is very much that kind of a thing because we don't entirely understand what Peter's describing to us here. We think we can get some clues, some hints, but you know, the idea that the people who have died in the past and were disobedient, and in fact, those who were destroyed by God's wrath through the flood, somehow may have gotten a second chance, that's a little foreign to us. We don't quite understand that. And yet, we can rely on Jesus to do what is right. We can trust him. He will make a way if there is a way to be made. My friends, he can do that for you today. What is it you're facing? Trust him in the things that you don't understand. And join me again tomorrow for The Morning Mindset. And tell a friend.